All right. Well, we are live. Welcome, everybody, uh, to the Where's Hemp Industry Experts webinar series. I want to thank everybody for attending here today. My name is Ryan McFarland, the founder of Where'sHemp.com, which is a lead generation and business development platform that we've designed for the CBD and cannabis industry. Now, for those of you who haven't claimed your business listing on our platform yet, I urge you to do that after today's webinar. You can simply go there, uh, Where'sHemp.com. Uh, choose the gold level listing and enter discount code free trial to get a gold level listing for free. So definitely urge you guys to do that after the webinar. Um, but just as a result of the, you know, the global pandemic, uh, businesses across every industry are, are obviously facing new challenges and, and some are going to survive in this industry and others are, are really going to thrive in the, in the new economy that's, that's online here now. And the hemp and CBD industry is, is one of those that is poised to thrive and, we want to help you put the tools and ideas and plans in place uh, to really ensure that your business is one of those that will be able to look back and say that you thrive during these, these tough times. And that's exactly why we've launched this, uh, the Where's Hemp Industry Experts webinar series. Essentially what this is going to include is, is you know, we've lined up over 20 of the hemp, CBD, marketing, sales, technology, software, uh, finance industry's top leaders to bring you the latest updates, the latest information, uh, different innovation, different strategies right to your computer screen so that, you know, right from your home, you can uh, stay on top of the information. And really during this time of uncertainty, it's, it's vital to, to carefully plan, focus uh, on the approaches that are going to positively impact your business and carry you into this new business climate as time goes on. So each week we're going to be featuring a different expert in the respective vertical, and uh, they're going to share their knowledge and strategies with you. We'll cover a variety of different topics and categories uh, with really something for everyone. That's really how we design this. So I urge you to you know, stay tuned for future emails and future broadcasts that we're going to be doing. Uh, but this week, I am proud to introduce you to Dr. Peter Husson, who is head of operations at Backbone Software. And with an extensive background in cannabis compliance, technology, operations, uh, and government affairs, um, that's uh, pre previous to to Backbone, though, Dr. Husson worked as a executive engineer managing contracts with NASA, uh, Los Alamos National Laboratory, Lockheed Martin, Boeing, and the U.S. Navy. He's also co-founder of the uh, Northern Lights Music Festival, One Log Cannabis Business Park, and Mesh Ventures. Uh, also with Peter today, we have uh, Jasmine Oliver, who is out of Denver, Colorado, who has a diverse scientific background with significant career experience in the hemp industry. She founded Cannabis Science Consultants and helps industry professionals with science-based cannabis education, uh, extraction, refinement methodology, quality and regulatory standards, and laboratory safety, and much, much more. So uh, super excited that you guys are all here with us today. I am going to uh, pass over the screen to Peter and let him take it away and, uh, and share all the amazing information that he's prepared for you today. So again, thanks again for attending. I will uh, pass it over to Peter and go from there. Peter, go ahead. Thank you very much, Ryan. Um, like to uh, welcome everybody um, and thank you for your attention today. Um, my name is uh, Dr. Peter Houston um, and uh, my counterpart here is Jasmine Oliver. Um, we are here to present a project and, and solution we've been working on for the last couple of years called Backbone um, with specific emphasis in uh, hemp processing, modeling, and analytics. Um, around your labs, around your farms, and throughout the supply chain. Um, what you'll find in, in, in our team in a very uh, unique sense um, is uh, you wouldn't, not a very classic, if you will, uh, software development team. Um, on one side, we have some of uh, actually Silicon Valley's finest um, from places like NetSuite, Oracle, um, Intuit, who, who makes QuickBooks, Sage Intact, Pro Tools, LinkedIn, all, all big name um, software and, and development firms um, that have built some of these, you know, most used, widely used worldwide systems um, in all in industry, in all industries. Um, on the cannabis side, rather than your classic tech sales team, um, our, our team of veterans are actually all um, ex-operators, controllers, um, uh, compliance officers, uh, distributors, and, and people who've really felt the pains of the industry over the last five to ten years. So uh, in a very unique sense, um, we're able to really uh, iterate on, on the problems that we're, that we're facing, that we all have been facing in both the uh, THC and hemp space, um, and essentially continue to, to build out the most robust solution that's going to meet the needs of this ever-changing um, 
market. Um, going to do a quick poll here. Um, Ryan, I'll kind of give you the floor here to go ahead and conduct your poll. I would like to ask you guys what describes your business to get an idea of who we have here. Um, cult of, uh, please go ahead and check one of those options. Excellent. Looks like everybody's uh, checking those now. So we'll just give it 30 seconds or so. Wait for you guys to finish that up. Um, looks like 20% in the processor extraction remediation category, retail brands, 24%. Uh, okay, got it. And then other 42%. Um, excellent. So about half and half between processors and extractors, and then the other 50% is distributors and other. So Welcome to all of you. That is your the questions. 82% voted. 33. All right. Excellent. Thank you guys for that. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and share these results, and wonderful. Those are all there. Cool, and we'll jump into question number two. Right. Sorry, let's see here. That just happened. Where is question number two? Here. All right. So the next question is going to be on the tracking software, uh, just so we can get an idea as to what you're currently using for tracking software. So if you guys can go ahead and answer this question, we'll give it another, another few seconds to uh, tally up the polls. And if you guys are using uh, uh, Google Sheets or Google Suite or Smart Sheets, go ahead and put those under spreadsheets. All right, so we'll give five more seconds. Wonderful. Okay, so it looks like 37% on spreadsheets, 19% paper logs, and 44% in other. Excellent. Great. Thanks, everybody. Great. Great to get an understanding of all of you. I appreciate that. Um, jumping in, um, we're going to talk a little bit about the current market challenges that we're seeing um, out in the industry, both uh, on the floor and in the general marketplace. I'm sure everyone here has a uh, seen the old production and pricing variabilities that we've seen across the country um, with the you know very vast amounts of CBD isolate that we're seeing um, people jumping over to the CBG and, and CBN isolates and, and ultimately seeing a lot of crop strategies revolving um, around uh, those specific cannabinoids. Um, uh, seeing the amount of biomass that's currently waiting to be extracted versus uh, some of the difficult winter uh, issues that we had this past year in different parts of the country. Um, and also people starting to really dig into the analytics when they're, when they're making purchases, um, not just on a price per, per gram or per, per pound basis, but really starting to tie in the potency um, into a lot of those transactions. Um, regulatory clarity, um, something we're all very, very familiar or unfamiliar with. Um, it's OSHA, local fire marshals, and public health departments uh, still continue to be um, running the show, if you will, uh, while we wait for um, additional clarifications and guidelines from folks like the FDA. Um, we've also seen um, a lot of activity coming from the DEA on the above 0.3% side. Um, they've created a few different um, regulatory structures that they're presenting and looking for feedback on coming in May, uh, especially to, we're gonna get an understanding of, of what that's gonna look like um, for, for hot product as well. Um, there's a few, few folks who are, who are seeing that that's gonna be their main tie-in into, into the hemp industry. Um, and then ultimately looking at uh, the USDA, uh, they're very proud to, to see them starting to certify more organic farms and, and, and assisting everybody getting um, to the next level. Now we get into some of the transactional items that really backbone and our team has been studying, understanding, and then building a solution for. I'm sure all everybody's gone through the process, the difficult process of uh, looking, looking for a COA, receiving a COA, and, and making sure that that COA, in fact, uh, matches where it, they said where the farmer said it came from. Uh, there are some regulatory frameworks that we've all seen and evolve in the in the THC market in different states about random batch sampling um, and, and uh, some of the characteristics that we can all foresee coming down the pipe. 
um, manual versus automated data entry is obviously something that's going to continue to to be a big thing in this industry. Uh, ultimately, um, you know, we're not going to be fully automated anytime soon. But can we take steps to to go ahead and assist us in in you know actual errors, um, as well as making sure that um, when people are hand inputting data, um, that there's some double verification going on there. And uh, probably the main one that's having regulators and, and operators scratch their head alike is uh, the idea of cannabinoid conversions. Um, it's been a very interesting uh, for the past six months to see the amount of folks across the country um, really diving into that in a major way. Um, everyone working to figure out um, how they're going to scale um, those type of conversions and uh, ultimately we'll see what kind of uh, regulatory bodies are going to have to deal with, with those types of things and how they're going to be able to track them. So understanding the current market um, now and jumping in and getting an idea of, um, let's say you're a cultivator out there or, or, you're, or you're a processor who's going to crude, for example, um, when you're looking to work with a potential partner um, who's going to do some further refinement or potentially do the initial extraction, uh, there's some basic information that, you, that you're going to be looking for. Um, what kind of reporting will I get from my processing partner? Um, how are they tracking um, their yields? How are they reporting those yields to me? How much insight do I have into how my product performed um, downstream, um, potentially in one, in, in one facility, and it may have gone to multiple facilities? And ultimately, how is me as a farmer, am I going to get that information back? Um, that, you know, that's directly related to uh, what we're all been seeing in the industry when it comes to uh, multiple party splits. Um, when you look at a split, a split could really have, and, and you know, we've talked to, to many folks on this, but we've in identified four main categories that potentially could be involved in a split. Um, the, 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 the person with the material providing the material, um, you could have the processor who's processing the material, you could have an investor who's particularly has a, has a financial stake in the material, and you could also have a distributor or a broker that's going to be involved. And oftentimes there's different characteristics and different deals that are going on. There might be prioritization. Um, of those splits and, and how are you keeping track of all those in a transparent way. Um, accountability, uh, we mentioned earlier, uh, just you know, seeing, really being able to tie COAs uh, to the actual material that's actually going to be processed. Um, what kind of portals are available for vendors? Um, we've all been in the situations where uh, asking your processor, have you ran my gear, have you ran my gear? Um, and it, it can become, you know, on both sides a difficult challenge to really get the visibility. So what kind of portals are available for your cultivators and for your other processing partners for them to go in and, and have some visibility and to see what's happening, uh, where their process, where their material is in process and, and how soon is it going to be done, um, which ultimately leads to how soon are you going to get paid. Um, also, we, we break up this idea of chain of custody in, in two main buckets. Um, there's the classic chain of custody, which is really more in, we call it an external chain of custody, which is from vendor to vendor, from seed to sale, um, all the way through the supply chain. Um, every uh, cultivator, um, distributor, manufacturer, uh, distributor again, retailer, every point that the material touched a different vendor. Now, that's one piece of the chain of custody. But what happens inside the facilities? Um, when you start talking about manufacturing specifically and processing, um, there is a chain of custody that happens within your facility um, from intake to extraction um, to distillation to post-processing to isolation to remediation um, and, and lots of different parts and pieces moving within the facility. So there's also the internal chain of custody that everyone really needs this insight to to truly get a chain of custody all the way through the supply chain. Lastly, when you're evaluating a, a process partner is uh, um, what kind of process controls do they have in place? Uh, what kind of records are, gonna, gonna they, they, are they going to have within their facilities? Um, what kind of parameters are they setting on their equipment? What solvents are they using? How are they tracking um, the reclamation rates of those solvents? And, and really, truly, what are the efficiencies? Those are just some of the questions I'm sure we we're all familiar with, um, but something we take very serious and we're seeing um, continuing to be a big, big part of the evaluation of, of working with others. Now we discuss the concept of efficiencies. Um, when whether you're a regulator or whether you're an operator, there's really three main components to understanding a hemp processing um, processors uh, efficiencies. 
Um, there's going to be the performance of the material, which relates to its post potency um, and the understanding of, of which processes um, certain materials are going to go through that will actually um, uh, uh, end up performing better, um, combination with different solvents, um, with different techniques on isolation. Um, so ultimately, what's the perform the material performance? Then the idea of your machine performance, right? And when you think of a machine, that can be a, a large extraction equipment. It could also be a hand process, let's say something like trimming, for example, um, and the performance of the solvents related to those. So really, we're looking at like when you think of the concept of a machine or a process, what are what's the performance of the individual components? Um, and lastly, we get into employee performance. Um, what does the training logs look like? Uh, what are the records that they've kept look like? Um, how are people being managed? What are your costs associated with some of those uh, overheads? So really, when you look at a high level, just to reiterate, these are the three main components that we look at um, when starting to get an understanding of process efficiencies. Jasmine, I'll let you take it away. Hi, everybody. I'm Jasmine. Thanks for having me and thanks for being here. I'm going to talk about some of the regulatory hurdles that we see every day in the industry. As you probably know, in the U.S., hemp and cannabis industries have been operating in somewhat of a regulatory gray zone. Um, hemp and marijuana are regulated differently. One of the biggest differences is that hemp isn't required to report to the state in the same way as marijuana. Um, with rapid growth in the industry, regulations are still ever-changing and need to be defined further. We've made strides in recent years with legalization, one example being the 2018 Farm Bill that removed hemp from the definition of marijuana in the Controlled Substances Act. Prior to that enactment of the 2018 Farm Bill, the CSA did not differentiate between marijuana and hemp. So what does this mean? The Farm Bill authorized production of hemp and removed hemp and hemp seeds from the DEA's schedule of controlled substances, but it also directed the U.S. Department of Agriculture, Agriculture USDA, to issue regulations and guidance to implement a program to create consistent regulatory framework around production of hemp in the United States. <clears throat> the U.S. Domestic Hemp Production Program establishes federal regulatory oversight of the production of hemp in the United States, and this authorizes the USDA to approve plans submitted by states and Indian tribes for the domestic production of hemp and establishes a federal plan for producers in states or territories of Indian tribes that choose not to administer their own plan. The FDA, the Food and Drug Administration, does have a responsibility to protect, protect and promote public health. So when it comes to cannabis products, the FDA is extremely interested in not only the safety of consumers, but also um, about potentially unsafe manufacturing processes. So <clears throat> just like any other FDA regulated products, such as food, dietary supplements, drugs, and cosmetics, hemp products that fall within these categories must also meet FDA requirements and standards. So this is where uh, CGMP comes in. Current good ma manufacturing practices are standardized principles that the FDA can enforce by law. Not only that, for production facilities, OSHA has a responsibility to ensure safe and healthy working conditions with their own set of standards. So GMP manufacturers must record a lot of different information throughout their processes, including all steps performed, all ingredients used, all materials and equipment that was used during the process. Test results are an essential element for anyone with cannabis products. Um, this includes analysis, analyses for cannabinoid potency, terpene profiles, residual solvents, pesticides, microbials, and heavy metals. Um, some of these aren't required, such as terpenes, um, but you know, if you are trying to create a specific product, it may be helpful to know what else is in there. Uh, as most of you know, packaging and labeling is taken very seriously by the FDA, and they've actually issued numerous warning letters to companies that um, have been selling unapproved CBD products with claims to treat or prevent serious diseases. And this has been going on since 2015, um, well before the 2018 Farm Bill was signed. GMP also requires validation and verification of processes and equipment. Um, so IQ, OQ, and PQ, those are um, some of the key set of protocols uh, for equipment validation. Um, GMP also requires, of course, SOPs, as we all know, and proper sanitation and hygiene. ISO, on the other hand, 
it really can't be enforced by law and it's voluntary. However, um, a lot of labs, distributors, and other major players are adopting ISO principles and getting certified because it can streamline processes, increase quality and productivity. And as you get to know these systems, you'll notice that <clears throat> there's actually a lot of overlap in ISO and GMP. They're both quality management systems. In ISO, processes must be measurable and controlled, and in, to ensure compliance, records must also be retained to show that procedures were performed according to your SOPs. Any process you changes, any deviations from SOPs have to be documented, and there should also be a system in place for products that need remediation if they don't meet certain criteria. Manufacturers must also be able to provide a controlled environment to prevent cross-contamination or adulteration of products. Staff must have documented and adequate training. Um, the risk to the quality of your products must be minimized at all stages, including storage and transportation. And there should be a system in place for recalls, customer complaints, including corrective action and quarantine procedures. GMP and ISO compliance ensures that you'll have a safe and high quality product and that your lab will be running smoothly or um, whatever processes that you are working on. In summary, the regulations on cannabis and hemp will continue to be defined. Um, there are several regulating agencies that have standards that we must adhere to, but implementing a, a quality management system such as ISO, GMP, and following these guidelines is truly essential in order to run a successful and compliant cannabis production business and meet the standards that you know, other industries like cosmetics and drugs, um, food are, you know, they're meeting those standards. So in, on top of that, you also have to work in accordance with your local, re local regulations, such as your fire marshal, and they will help you prepare for these regulatory hurdles. Thanks guys, Thanks. Peter, you can take over. Thanks Jasmine. Um, so, uh, a lot to a lot for everyone to take in and i'm sure a lot many folks are familiar with a lot of these hurdles so what does that mean and what are we doing to solve for those hurdles and, and the market challenges that we're seeing um, one of the main tactics that we've used in backbone of the development of this system is the concept of visualizing your production um, what you see here is a screenshot from our system um, essentially the uh, oftentimes what you'll what you'll get is we're trying to essentially you have your boots on the ground operators in the labs um, working day to day um, and, and trying to record data live right as to their best of their ability you've got your c-suite um, and your managers and people who may not be in the facility um, but are actually making the decisions day to day on on, on how business operations are going to go and ultimately what we've continually found is that if those two systems are not working together um, it can cause a lot of problems, especially when it comes to recording the proper data. So by visualizing your production line, you're essentially getting, you know, it, it's very powerful to get a, a team of managers and boots on the ground operators together, visualize your production line, and everybody agree to say, this is our production line, these are the steps that we're taking, and this is the data that we're collecting. Costing. Uh, a lot of the systems that we've seen out there and, and some of the more classic systems, um, they'll give you a cost, a rough approximately uh, approximation of your cost per gram, let's say at an end of a quarter when everyone's done all their calculations. You may have lost two and a half months of revenue by waiting for the end of a quarter to get your cost per gram. Um, so really focusing on things like component costing, being able to have your live inventory evaluation and as well as your, your item profitability in a live format um, can be extremely valuable um, into monitoring those things on a day-to-day -day basis and understanding uh, why did my cost per gram go up during while I was using my distillation machine that day? Why did my cost per gram go up um, when during a final packaging step? And rather than waiting three months for that information to come out, monitoring it real, real time. Um, and then a transparent chain of custody, we've discussed this already. Um, I, this is a quick example of our, our material lineage um, when we talk about that internal chain of custody. These are different winterized oil and pieces of biomass um, that came into a facility at different times and all ended up in the same batch um, so in the traceability all the way through, um, as well as uh, being able to have a robust uh, uh, labeling system in which uh, as things move to the supply chain, you can scan a very robust QR code that not just has where it came from, but as all of the analytics, um, including stuff like from testing labs. And finally, one of the main 
strongest, and, and I can't emphasize this enough, um, being in the middle of the supply chain, like a lot of the processors, um, harvest teams and, and, and co-packers are, is um, the integration with the labs. Um, we're working with some of the strongest lab uh, organizations in the country. Um, and rather than a lot of the double entry that we're seeing where you have your information in one system, um, the, you have to fill out a form to, to, in, to get that information to a lab. They give you a PDF back. And I'm sure you guys could all speak to the fact that I bet a lot of your uh, COAs are all sitting in PDF format in Google Drive. It is not going to do much good for, for a lot of us who are trying to get some really good analytics into our system and understand things like potencies and yields, which are really big functions of that. So we've built that into our system. Um, and we've also gone ahead and we're tying into the actual extraction equipment in your facility. Um, and we're doing this with the IoT, Internet of Things, um, wireless connections that essentially go to scales, flow meters, thermal couples, pressure transducers, and really bring all of that information um, under one umbrella and under one data set for, for you to start understanding, like we talked about, the efficiency of your, of your equipment and, and your process within. Um, what you see here, this is a graph of distillate per minute coming out of a, one of the flow meters of one of our partner facilities. So from here, um, I'll jump into a quick demo of the system and show you guys a few case studies. Peter, let's actually, if we could take a minute and just see if, if any of the uh, audience has any questions um, real quick. You guys can just go and type in the Q&A uh, section. There's a Q&A section. We got one question here um, from Cecilia who says, I'm, I'm from Guatemala. Do you see a close date for cannabis to be legal worldwide? Um, Peter, do you, have, do you have, I mean, can you comment on that? Yeah. I'm not sure if we can comment on that, but what, what are your thoughts there? I would tell you guys that there's absolutely activity both in the hemp and uh, THC of activity in Central America, South America, uh, the Caribbean, uh, Europe, Asia right now. So I would say the one day is a yes, one day for certain. It's it's coming. It's just going to be a matter of time. And, and we're, we're seeing people, we're getting, uh, we have versions of our system in Spanish already. So I can tell you that we're prepping for that as well. Great. And, it, you know, if anybody else has questions, just open up the, uh, the Q&A uh, toolbar on your Zoom meeting and go ahead and, and type in any questions that you may have that you'd like for us to answer uh, as we go through this. But we'll go ahead and hop into the demo now and show, show everybody a little bit about Backbone and, and, and the power, power of how it works. So, Peter, I'll, I'll give it back to you. Great. Uh, Ryan, everyone see my screen okay? Yep. <clears throat> yeah? Yes, we can so, see it. Cool, yeah. great. All right, guys, uh, here's an example. Um, this is a, uh, you know, I guess you'd call it a simplified hemp isolation uh, example um, where you have a, uh, a purchase order. Uh, this is uh, inventory block, um, goes into a crude extractor, you get crude oil. Um, uh, this goes into a white film, you get distillate, and an isolation module, you get isolated. A very simplified version, but what you're seeing here is this is a simulation of your production line. So what it allows you to do is track different inputs and different outputs depending on your steps. So we can go ahead and model a wide variety of different situations from ethanol to infusions to nurseries to cultivation, even solventless and processing. Let's go ahead and show you guys an example of a CO2 um, extraction run that we'll go ahead and do. I'll go ahead and... Create a purchase order. We'll go ahead, um, grab some biomass here. Uh, lots of different ways to generate your lots, your production batches, your, your harvest batches. Um, we'll grab some Blue Dream. We've actually, we can tie into scale, so you can actually read these, uh, read it automatically into the system. We'll go ahead and type in our costs so we can start calculating our costs as it goes through our production line. You guys are very lucky. You don't have to deal with cultivation tax in the hemp industry. And let's say you may be uh, tolling for somebody and you want to track that. So we can we automatically quarantine items that our users may choose to, to go ahead and quarantine. Um, and we also uh, go ahead and, and allow you to attach all supporting documentation. Um, oftentimes, you're going to get your controllers for every transaction, whether it's a manifest, copies of licenses, copies of test results, everything associated with the transaction we keep within the purchase order. 
jumping in it, we create new outputs for every material ID that you create. So essentially, you can go ahead and uh, print your labels from here. These are all custom QR codes that we customize. Um, depending on uh, how you guys want to view this stuff, if there's if there's other pieces of information that you'd like to store, we can go ahead and present it. And these are all done in house. And you can see that we protect your operations from putting anything into a machine until it's been released from quarantine. So this is where we start tying into the labs. Um, this is obviously a, a basic example for you guys, but ultimately starting to store some of this data um, and, and attaching files and making sure it all stays in one place so that you guys have that information. And you can go ahead and automatically approve it. So or have a manager approve it. You can see that now I can go ahead, I can move forward and I can put it in my oven to decarb it. Um, running through, say I want to put 100 pounds, put it on my automated scale. Um, I've now turned the clock on. Big deal in tracking efficiencies. If I had a thermocouple attached, we'd be monitoring temperature here as well. Um, and we get into the and, and any supporting documentation associated with this oven. This is where you have, may have some of your IQ, OQ, PQ, and other documents associated with the maintenance logs of your material. So everything during this runs, you'll know um, essentially what's been maintained. And then during this run, uh, what was the condition of the oven? Now we're all familiar with the idea of expected versus actual yields. I know I'm going to lose about 10% in an oven before I go to my extractor, so I'll go ahead and save it. This allows me to go around my facility, potentially operate other equipment, um, come back, and let's say I want to uh, come back an hour and a half later, and I want to actually compute my actual weight. 91.1 came out of the oven. I put a, a timestamp on the completion of the event. You can see that we've tracked the yield, uh, we've carried the cost over, um, and gone ahead and you can create in your new material IDs, you can see that we're tracking all of the individual steps and any time anybody touched anything to do or adjusted any uh, measurement points to make sure that you have a full visibility into something along uh, whenever that happened. And we've also started to build our material lineage, right? And this becomes very, very powerful um, and very unique to our system. When you start getting the things downstream, like winterized oil or distillate, um, how many of you have, uh, you know, could put a jar of winterized oil on your desk? And if somebody asks you, can you tell me where that crude oil came from? And can you tell me what are all the downstream items that may have affected? It can be a pretty loaded question unless you were tracking things pretty meticulously. So what we allow you to do if you're using Backbone is here's all of the downstream items. These are distillates that came from this batch of crude oil. I can actually drill into those distillates and I can look at the cartridge blends and mixes that formulations that it went into and potentially the carts that it went in. So if I wanted to go ahead and pull a recall report, here's all of the downstream items that may have been affected by that particular batch, as well as all of the vendors I may need to contact in the event of a recall. And same is true for upstream, right? So like we mentioned before, these are all live links. These are all the vendors and the POs that they came on. And here's all of the machines that may have touched this material. So again, we go back to that internal chain of custody. Can you track who was working on that particular piece of equipment? What was the current state of that equipment when that material was extracted? Where did that material come from? What were the COAs associated with it? So you start to get the idea here, which is by employee, by equipment, and by material, can you drill in whether, you know, we don't have to be negative about it either. Uh, what if something is just doing extremely well, a particular batch um, to at a particular, and on a particular machine um, run by a particular team? Right, you guys may want to replicate that. So how can you go back and say, okay, why did that work so well? Why was our performance so good? And why did we get such good pricing on it? So again, I want to kind of emphasize the fact that visualizing your production lines here, um, whether you're tracking terpenes, you can be tracking solvents, we can re be reordering solvents for you. Um, it's really built in a, in a simplified format for you as the operator to be looking at this and say, okay, this is my production line. If you want your extractors to be focused just on their extraction pieces, you want your distillation team just to be focused on their distillation, we can break this all out and everybody starts to be essentially unified 
um, in terms of tracking the information and the data that you guys want that both is going to help you as an operator um, and, and as well as uh, getting you know the information that the C-suite and, and your CFO is going to need in order to continue to make the decisions um, that will benefit your business. Um, outside of that, we do a good amount of reporting. Um, let's go ahead and, and give you guys an example of uh, something for, for a farmer, right? Uh, some, of the, some of the reports that we've been seeing that farmers have been requesting. Um, so let's go ahead and, and jump in and see. We want to do a lot of history reports. Someone gave this uh, particular extractor 50,000 pounds of biomass. So as a farmer, what kind of visibility do I have? Well, you can go ahead and see all the way to isolate, right? From biomass, we went 6% to crude, 4.5% to distillate, 3.14% to isolate. Um, gives gives you a lot of visibility of performance how that did. Now that's great for the farmer, but let's say the uh, the the processor just purchased a brand new piece of distillation equipment, and they want to know how that's performing. Well, you can go ahead and take the yield from crude, seventy five percent to distillate from crude, fifty two percent to isolate from crude. So these are just examples of the types of reports. This is a very simplified demo with only three steps. If you guys wanted to go ahead and some of our more advanced operators who want to actually track all of the processes in their production line, we can go ahead and look at things from grinding to extraction to your winterization steps, your DWAC steps, your rotovape, your decarb, your distillate, your head, your tails, your first pass distillate, second pass distillate, remediation, T free, all the way to CBD isolate. Yeah, and Peter, I just want to chime in there real quick for, you know, for a lot of the processors out there that, that may be, you know, doing tolling or relying on tolling to, to process, being able to offer the farmer such clear visibility is going to help you not only increase your efficiencies, but also win more business, you know, so just, just having that tool and by showing the farmers that tool, there's a huge disconnect between, you know, the, the farmers giving material because they, you know, there's, there's a lack of trust. And they don't know what's happening with their material. And by being able to provide this type of visibility into a farm, it's going to give you an upper hand versus your competition uh, when, when, you know, going to win, win business. And then, you know, secondly, is there, a, is there a report for like retail brands, Peter, that like, you know, if a retail brand is like sourcing from manufacturers or anything like that? Yeah, so full sales reports. I mean, essentially, depending on how you guys, I mean, I guess ask the question again, Ron. So like, like, let's say like a retail brand is sourcing, I'm just kind of springing this on you, sorry, but let's say, because there is retail brands that are, that are on right now, um, you know, is there, is there a report that like a retail brand, that lineage that you can show a, a retail brand? Um, so like if, if they're currently sourcing from a, a processor um, and they want to have better visibility in, into their production line, is there something that a retail brand would be able to to see? Yeah, you could go ahead and give them visibility into that. So if you guys wanted to um, provide your retailer with a with an access to backbone account, for example, you can go ahead and give them something along like this, um, where you can go ahead. They could have actually they could drill in. You could give them a read only access. You could see here's the products that essentially were sold to a particular uh, retailer, and if you wanted to give them access to view where this product came from this is our uh, our vendor portal page essentially where people can can jump in they can look at the licenses associated with their customer and they can also drill in and see all of the uh, all of where everything came from that was associated with that particular transaction yeah so just i mean that just in, in itself you know so for any any of the retailers that are on the call right now you know having access to this visibility like how is that going to affect your your supply chain how is that going to affect your sales if you can be able to go through and show all of that there um, so thanks for drilling into that, Peter. Uh, we do have a couple more questions. Um, <clears throat> Celeste says, where is this information stored for users? Is it in your cloud or is it in the cloud of the user? Uh, it's in, uh, in the cloud. It's in the cloud. Okay, got it. Um, and then we have another, uh, apologize for, for uh, maybe mispronouncing the name, but Akilesh. Um, he says, in Texas, hemp regulations have been updated and can backbone help in picking up the samples from field if GPS coordinates are provided? Absolutely. Um, I mean, essentially, you guys would go ahead and you can actually ask us. We can put in, uh, we can store GPS coordinates in the system. So, and you can actually take and go ahead and create a purchase order and go tag. Let's say you're a processor and you're going out to a field and you're trying to prepare your information. You can go ahead out there and actually tag all of the bags out in the field. And then you as a processor will now have an idea of essentially what's out there, how much is out there. So you can go ahead, wait for your COAs to come in, take the samples yourself. 
um, and that will give you uh, both the location as well as all of the potential material that you're going to want to process. Awesome. Great. Thank you. So if anybody else has, has questions, go ahead and type them in. Um, but uh, I think that those are the two questions for now. So appreciate it. You can keep going then. Um, I think I, that's it. I mean, outside of that, I know uh, a few of the other pieces that you guys can go ahead and that, that we're capable of uh, doing on the system, um, going ahead and doing things like CBD dog treats, tinctures. Um, if you guys want to do different recipes and blends, we can go ahead and track. Um, go ahead and do combinations. Um, if you want to look at, you know, a history, a historical of a run, um, seeing essentially tracking your costs through the runs as well. Um, if you're doing blends, formulations, and also uh, getting an idea of, like we talked about, what your current on-hand inventory is. Um, and ultimately, really, and really is, is what's your value of the inventory and how much did it cost you to make? And this, you know, this inventory evaluation uh, report becomes super. We do component costing and we track it all the way through, especially in manufacturing where a lot of this can be a pretty tough calculation for someone to do. Um, and they have to go through a lot of different steps, especially if you're only using, let's say, a GMP system that's not really built for production tracking as well as accounting. Um, we're trying to do that all under one roof. And I think that's really what we found is um, by having such an enterprise team that comes from the enterprise finance world, um, really digging in and being able to essentially what uh, I'm sure a lot of you may have seen out in the industry right now, if you want to operate truly uh, to these standards that are coming down the pipe, you're going to have to have a separate QMS system that's going to be a, tied to a second a secondary production tracking system to a third accounting system. And so we're really trying to bring, instead of three systems, this is all of them in one. And that's really fundamentally um, the, the, where, where we're keeping our eye out right now is looking out for you guys, trying to make this something that you as the operators feel comfortable in, in inputting and at the same time is giving that live information that allows you to do these calculations. Excellent. A um, couple other questions came in. So Justin said, who, who owns the actual data? If the farmer wants to sell their data, do they have the ability? Great to question. Great question. Thank you for that. Um, you, the vet, you as a customer, you own your data. You own your processes. Um, the best example that I'll give you guys is um, look at a QuickBooks instance. Like I, the idea of an instance. When you go ahead and you purchase QuickBooks, they give you a setup, right? And they say, "Here is our basic setup." You do not have to use it that way. A really expert CPA or a consultant, they can come in and they ha they configure their chart of accounts and they configure QuickBooks in its own and more, more powerful way and they own that they own the numbers in there and that's what they own so really think about backbone in terms of configure you can configure it in whatever way you want to um, but ultimately you own now you own the data and you also own all of the processes and and around the configuration of those processes and, and essentially also the configuration of your reports awesome um, another question is, is have you, uh, have you computed the cost per pound of biomass for this service? Absolutely. Um, and, but I think you'd have to provide a little bit more information here. Um, per price per pound for biomass for this service, like as in paying us for, um, Ryan, you want to help uh, me with that question? I'm not sure. Terry, if you could elaborate on that and, uh, and re-ask that question, we'll move on to Celeste's, uh, question which is if all the information is stored in the cloud, what steps do you take to ensure this information is secure? Because the processor has to lay out their entire process, which for some includes proprietary intellectual property. Absolutely. Are you backbone as a company able to access the information each user provides? Um, so uh, we, uh, our customer success team, obviously in order to support our customers has to have access to it, a very select group. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and say again that our team is some of the best from Silicon Valley in terms of encryption and, and security around those processes. So um, uh, it's similar to a QuickBooks team that's going to assist you. They're going to have to have some members of their team are going to have visibility in there. But ultimately, we keep it in the highest, in extreme high regard. And a lot of the, you know, after a, our sales team and, and teams out there in the field, um, that gets passed off to a very secure server. And, and our team really uh, 
uh, takes pride in the security that we do around our processes and, and our data. And it's completely understand because uh, I think you're seeing the value of the system by asking that question in terms of, well, you're actually able to to model all of my processes. We get those, uh, we get this question a lot, but ultimately um, that's really truly going to allow you to uh, uh, essentially actually really I, have your IP stored in such a fashion that you can actually prove that it's yours. And we've had actually people ask us to assist them and and potentially trying to patent their processes because it's the first time they've actually been able to show it um, in a backbone system. So we've actually been able to help people actually secure um, and using backbone to actually secure some of that intellectual property. Awesome. Thanks. Thanks for answering that. <clears throat> um, another question we have is is backbone tied or tieable to our accounting system and can it handle metric system? Absolutely. So. Um, I'll go ahead and show you guys that right now. Um, metric is a great example. Um, I, you know, it's really just a reporting system, just like it would do an accounting system. So in our compliance tab, um, essentially we go ahead and we track um, um, all of the processes, right? So this is a very, you're mod we're modeling processes here, not just inventory. A lot of the other and a majority of the other systems that are out there, they're just tracking inventory. And we are actually modeling the processes. And so by modeling the processes, what it allows you to do is you can put rules on those processes. And so there's going to be certain steps where a government says, okay, it's changed composition. You have to go ahead and, and track it in a certain fashion and go ahead and create a new metric tag. Um, there's going to be other steps, let's say, where you're pouring one big jar of oil into four smaller jars. That's not necessarily something that needs to be tracked from a uh, let's say a government standpoint, but you may need to track the finance and the accounting associated with, well, how much labor was that in order to do those steps? So we essentially will tie into any of your uh, accounting packages. We do not host the general ledger in backbone. We do that on purpose. We do a lot of the intrinsic reporting around your costs and your profitabilities, but ultimately we'll go ahead and tie into your QuickBooks um, and any of your ERP systems that you guys may be using. Great. <clears throat> um... So, so Terry revised the question says, I'm sure cost will be covered. Then a producer can extract price per pound or unit could be calculated. Say that one more time. Uh, let me just see if I can have Terry open up. Uh, Terry, I'm going to open you up and unmute you. Can you repeat your question here for us, please? Uh, lost it. Terry, are you there? Yeah, I'm just what? Yeah, I am. Okay. I'm just wondering. You know, there's definitely a cost involved with this awesome program, guys. You did a great job. But um, looking down the road, you know, a big farm, what is this going to add to a pound of biomass trying to get it sold? Or, you know, you're making pet treats or oil drops, tinctures. It's going to add some cost to that. I'm just wondering how much it's going to add to the underlying cost of your product. So, I mean, I can give you guys with the way that we treat our, our, our the system, like how we price our system, maybe is what you're asking? Yeah, yeah. Okay. That's fine, how you price the system. That would work, too. Then you could figure out based on whatever you're producing or growing, well, okay, this is going to add to my bottom line this much. But I agree, if you're doing this stuff full time, you're going to need this tracking in place. Great idea. Oh, that's a no, that's a great question. And, and actually we've, so right now, um, right, we've, you know, guys, we've been around for two years and we, we just are launching and with our friends here at Where's Hemp. Um, and, and we're just getting out into to kind of the, the, the rest of the world right now. And so we, we charge uh, by facility. Um, and so essentially the way that we do it is uh, depending on um, if you're in THC land, we'll go by license type because there's strict definitions around different licenses and how they need to operate. But when it comes to uh, when it comes to the hemp facilities or hemp farms, we'll actually charge you by your whole facility with unlimited users. So essentially, depending on the, uh, the size and the scale of your operation, how many different farms you have or how many different operations you're conducting, that's how the price will vary. But I think more to your point, which is interesting to us, where we actually see this going for us, which is actually more of a tolling fee for us. Because if we're able to model all of these toll, all of these drops that are coming out on a per gram basis, you know, would it be interesting to customers to say, well, I should get charged for how much I'm actually using the system? So I think your, your, your question is well taken. We've really thought about that, but I think get out the gate right now. We're sticking with more of a flat fee um, uh, based on the size and scope of your facility. Um, and then from there, kind of get an idea because there's going to be different types of runs, right? That's one of the most flexible things for the system is that 
we want to encourage you to use the system more. We don't want you to be charged necessarily by every click that you have to make. And so it's a fine line between encouraging you guys to actually build out as many runs as possible and, and also define your different steps. And sometimes you may model a run by employee shift. You may not do it by batch, right? You might do it by employee shift. So we're playing with those different costs. I understand your question. And I think that if I had an understanding of what your current costs were based on our pricing, I could probably answer that for you. Um, but for the high level answer to your question is we charge a flat fee by operation or by facility. Got it. And, and, and while, while we're on that topic, I mean, I guess, Peter, where, where would people go to get more information? If someone wanted like a one-on-one -on -one demo um, or if they actually wanted like a quote, you know, where, where can people go to, to get more information? Um, you know, you can, go straight, you can go straight to our website, Backbone IQ, um, mm -hmm. right here. You can request a demo here. Um, you type in your information. Uh, we'll get back to you same day. Um, you can find out more information on our website here, but I would say very, very quickly here. Um, you can, you can request a demo from us and, uh, we'll get you guys set up. We'll do a preliminary chat, discuss with you a little bit about your, uh, your operations, um, and understand your needs. I think what you'll find is that, uh, our team and, and our mantra, if, as they say, is, uh, we're not just selling software. We're really trying to help you solve your problems and understand your problems. Um, and anyone that's going to tell you that here's an off the shelf. A solution that's going to fix all of your things without listening to you and hearing you out and seeing what the things that are important to you um, may not be uh, listening and maybe just telling. So I think that's ultimately what you'll find with our team is, you know, I think people compare us to some of the best bartenders in the world came from Silicon Valley where they just sit there and they just listen to all of these issues that are happening and then kind of work with us as a, as a group, right? As a team, as an industry where uh, we, we take the, uh, the stoned birds approach where uh, every feature that we make, we have to get at least three birds stoned with it. Love it. Um, Another question we had is, uh, does Backbone ha has, have experience in international operations? We do. Um, actually, uh, I will, you guys will be hearing about it in the, in the very near future. Uh, Backbone is uh, in the Caribbean. Um, we are in uh, speaking with folks in uh, Central America at the moment, both uh, as a software itself, but also as technical consultants. Um, and our next uh, voyage is it's looking like it's going to be Asia. Um, one of the things from an international standpoint that we found is that a lot of the international players are actually before jumping into systems, um, we've been asked and we're actually consulting and helping folks just because, you know, Colorado did it a certain way um, or because different states in the U.S. are doing it a certain way does not mean necessarily necessarily that that's the right way to do it it's just the way that we had to get it out there to, to kind of make legalize this so by no means is that something that we're saying something negative um but we do think that there's some more uh i would say uh, efficient ways for regulators to get the information that they need that doesn't put so much burden on the operator to be operating seven dis different systems where at the end of the day really what they're looking for is a report so uh, I think that's the long answer to absolutely. Um, we already have full versions um, seed to sell in Spanish um, and uh, we'll see where we'll go from there. Amazing. Um, excellent. Well, we're kind of wrapping up on the hour here. If, uh, if anybody has any other questions, certainly now is the time to, to type them in. Um, Peter, if you have any final, final words you wanted to, uh, Oh, I appreciate you guys for all of you that were willing to stay on for this. Um, this is a very exciting time. At the same time, it's a very, it can be a little nerve wracking. Um, and just know that, uh, you know, you have a, there's, there's other folks and, and ourselves who are coming out here and we're here to help you. We're here to listen. Um, and we're here to be nimble with you. Uh, this is, this is just not going to be a one size fits all. And there's a lot of, a uh, lot of, uh, uh, hurdles that are going to be thrown at us along the way here and and just know that if you if you sign up with us and, and you talk to us that we're going to be there with you and and, and go along for this ride together with you so i um, appreciate all of your guys time um like i said backbone iq is where you can find us request a demo and uh we look forward to hearing from you guys and thank you very much for your time awesome thank you so much peter and i'm just going to uh you know walk you guys through real quick so any of you that are you know on or not on where's hemp yet i mean you can basically come on here it's pretty simple to come on we are offering a free trial to our system uh you're going to come into whereshemp.com click list with us choose the gold level and uh, enter code free trial and that's how you're going to be able to get listed on here and all of these webinars that we're going to be hosting are going to be part of our members so you'll click on the gold and enter a free trial on the bottom so when you guys get set up on the, uh, on, the, on the site here, we will be distributing this webinar and all the future webinars in the members area. 
um, and you'll be able to have access to this recording and all the, all the future recordings. So I want to thank everybody for uh, attending here today. Peter, thank you so much for uh, attending, and it was wonderful having your insight and uh, a, a deep look into Backbone. Um, Jasmine, thank you as well for sharing your insights on all the regulations. Hopefully, everybody found this valuable, and, uh, and it was a big help for everybody. So we'll see you next week on the uh, next week's webinar. We're going to be covering some marketing. Um, so look out for the invites to that, and uh, we'll see everybody next week. Have a great remainder of your week. Thanks so much for attending. Thanks, everybody. Bye-bye.